Hey everyone, and welcome back. So today, we're going to be reviewing Arietta of Spirits for the Nintendo Switch. Now this game is a pixel art, top-down action adventure game, and it releases today, August 20th of 2021, and it'll be selling on the Nintendo Switch eShop for $19.99. Now I do want to thank the developer for the review code for the game, and remind you all at the same time that if you like the content, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe if you aren't already. In this game, you play as a young girl called Arietta, who along with her parents are visiting grandma's cabin for the first time since her passing a year ago. At first, the mother and daughter are expressing a lot of grief coming to terms with being here without grandma for the first time. And this will be a common theme surrounding the whole game. The adventure begins when you are introduced to a spirit world companion named Arco, and you learn that you are a spirit guide, able to see between both worlds the human and the spirit realm. This launches you on your first adventure to free your grandma's spirit from unfinished business and leads to the further events of the game. Now, as not to ruin any of the discovery, as it is a big part of the enjoyment of this game, I won't divulge any more of the storyline, but know that it is a central point of the game and there is a fair bit of dialogue at certain points of your adventure with a mystery to unravel. Now the gameplay here is very straightforward, with a sword slash set to Y and a dodge mechanic set to B. Later on the adventure, you will also unlock a shield ability set to A that will be limited by spirit orbs that you can see under your heart points and renders you invulnerable to attack for as long as you have energy available. Your spirit energy replenishes automatically over time, meaning that juggling between dodging and shielding is the biggest hurdle to combat here. Unfortunately, other than that and a very early upgrade to your sword that simply changes its color and makes you able to damage spirit beings, no other upgrades are made to your combat abilities or mechanics. Now throughout your adventure, you will be able to fill what are called Roamer Cores, with shards from fallen Roamer type enemies, and once full will allow you to add an extra heart container. Later on, you will also be able to collect extra spirit energy containers through storyline events and side quests. There's also an ability to clear certain specific obstacles that will be obtained, but this actually adds nothing to combat and ultimately is only used about at four or five specific spots. Now, I would have really liked to see further development to combat mechanics, such as new spirit abilities, because unfortunately, as it stands, it does feel a little bit too limited. However, before we get into that, now probably comes a question that a lot of you are already asking after seeing some of the gameplay. Would I compare this game to a top-down Zelda-like adventure? And the answer here is no, I would not compare this to a top-down Zelda-like adventure. Because although the combat seems similar, none of the puzzle-solving elements are present here, or neither the constant acquisition of new abilities to evolve gameplay. This is more of a hack-and-slash adventure with some slight exploration although a very story-driven version of a hack and slash. Now, if we get into the pixel art itself, it is absolutely beautiful. The soundtrack is of an ambient nature, but contributes nicely to the overall experience, picking up when it needs to during more important events, such as boss fights. Animation and overall responsiveness of the controls are perfectly on point, and you can tell that a lot of effort has been put into fine-tuning these. The environments are also lush and vibrant, once again coming to life through beautiful pixel art. The bosses are also of interesting design, each having their own pattern and weakness to discover, and were pretty much the high point of the combat in this game. Where however the game was less interesting and diverse was the limited variety of regular enemies, with only about 8 variations throughout the whole adventure and three of those eight variations being a simple color palette and behavioral swap on an earlier design. And now that brings us to Arietta's biggest downside, the overall length of the game. My full playthrough, including completing both subquests, was only about three and a half hours. 
and I died only three times in total, two of those times being to the final boss. Meaning that for a game without any puzzles, whose main draw is the top-down hack and slash combat, the challenge level is very low and also very short. And even at this length, with the simple nature of combat and the low variety of enemies, it was starting to get slightly repetitive towards the end. Luckily, however, as I mentioned earlier, Arietta's storyline, pixel art, and boss fights are still compelling enough to hold the game together. And even though after completing the game, a harder challenge level is unlocked, I don't see very many people going in for a second helping due to the repetitive nature of the combat and the storyline mystery no longer being a draw. Ultimately, we really have a mixed bag. Beautiful visuals, smooth animations, nice boss fights with a gripping and even touching at moments storyline. On the other hand, gameplay that is too simple and straightforward and that can be finished too quickly, but almost comes as a saving grace in a sense, because before the game becomes too repetitive, it ends. So now we get to the verdict. And if this is the first review of mine that you're watching, I just want to let you know that my full scale is down below in the description of the video. Now I'm going to be giving Area of Spirits nonetheless a 7, putting it at the bottom end of a good game. In the end, the problem here is the sales price. If this game was sub $10, I would have no problem with the runtime or the simple nature of the adventure, and actually could have probably given it a much higher score due to the production value. At $20, however, this feels like the first chapter of two of a larger game with deeper mechanics. And I would wait to pick this one up till a 50% sale hits. Now let me know what you think. Are you going to be waiting or are you going to pick this game up at full price? And as usual, on the way out, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already, and hit that notification bell so you know when all my future content comes out. And as usual, I hope I'll see you in my next video.